Hello learners, I am Dr. Subodh Kishorwani, working with Indira Gandhi National Open University in School of Management as an Associate Professor Capacity. The topic which I am going to talk today is, you know, quite, quite important because it's it's purely, you know, based on the assumptions. And when you are assuming anything, when you are, you know, creating a hypothetical format, and then you run on this particular format, I think that is a very challenging task. So hypothesis is a very important ingredient as far as research is concerned, as far as, you know, the day-to-day -day life is concerned. But anyway, we are just, you know, concentrating ourselves to to this particular format called research. And we have, we have observed that, you know, in research, hypothesis is a very important thing because as I have talked about, it based on the assumptions, it talks about, you know, the hypothetical things. And you know, on the basis of the assumption, you proceed and further what happen, you know, the things are going to be changed. So anyway, prior to going into the depth of this particular topic, I just want to throw a light that this is part of our course called uh, MCU3, Research Methodology and Statistical Analysis. We are in the first block, which talks about research and data collection. In the second block, talks about processing and preservation of data. Then you have block three, relational and trend analysis. And the fourth block talks about probability and hypothesis testing. I think, and finally, you know, the interpretation report writing is there. But anyway, so we are just, you know, building a, a concept of hypothesis in this particular presentation. And when we are, you know, moved to the block four, after having, you know, 20, 30 rounds of discussions, then we will definitely throw a light on how we are going to test the hypothesis. What are the certain parameters? What are the certain tests which are going to be quite important? Because when you are presuming anything, you have certain, you know, options behind it. So in hypothesis, you know, what we observe that there are null hypothesis, there are alternate hypothesis. So we are going to throw a light on all those aspects and uh, we start with you know the assumptions then you know that assumption fails and then alternate hypothesis comes into picture so how this process comes how, what is the modus operandi behind it we will definitely talk about all those aspects just you know recapitulate what we have done in our preceding lectures we start with the research preamble part of research where the the basic concept had been talked about you know how the research is going to be initiated then research thoughts are there then there are certain uh, faqs frequently asked questions which are which are you know quite uh, omnipresent in nature and comes in the mind of researchers when they are you know just entering into the world of research so what we observe that that uh, you know these are the things which we have already covered and we have built the concept now and gradually you know we are just you know throwing a light on certain terminologies and once we accomplish all those terminologies then we start you know execute it so we start with building the concept then you know uh, evaluate the process and then finally you know start implementing and then executing the process so this whole course you know talks about you know the complete uh, Reckoner kind of which which starts with research methodology methodology and statistical analysis are used in between. So anyway, research plan and research problem we have already talked about how you're going to plan your research and what are the problems which which comes in between and work as a stumbling blocks and how you're going to come out because if your planning is good, if you have a long term vision, very easily you can narrow down that that stumbling blocks that problem and finally you know you reach to the conclusion. So this is all about you know and once you have got a knack of of research methodology or the research very easily you can use it you know once you go for the further research when you go for your doctoral programs or or you know or the or the future studies and finally you know the formulation of objective was there we have seen that objective is very important ingredient in our preceding lectures we have thrown a, a, a very you know uh, very dedicatedly about this this terminology about the objectives and we see that how the gaps are converted into objectives and how objectives are you know helps in building the hypothesis so today discussion talks about you know how we are going to talk about the hypothesis and how these objectives are converted into hypothesis and and then these hypotheses are you know used in as a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so based on the you know the respondents uh, how the respondents are going to reciprocate and this is the model which is there so anyway i think uh, we start with uh, with a theory of hypothesis and there is there is a big difference between hypothesis and theory and if we if we see that the uh, hypothesis talks about the scientific reasoning is an assumption made before any research has been completed for the sake of testing so i think we assume, you know, assumptions may be sometimes right, sometimes wrong, but uh, what we observe that it all depends how you are presuming the things, how you are assuming the things. Whereas, you know, when you talk about the theory, a theory on the other hand is a principle set to explain phenomena already supported by a data. So I think theory is more concrete in nature and when you talk, when you compare with hypothesis, hypothesis is based on assumptions, whereas theory is based on, you know, the 
the data which which is you know more genuine in nature so so they are they are building blocks we start with hypothesis then develop a format then develop a theory so if you there is a difference between hypothesis and theory and hypothesis is a proposed explanation for some phenomena based on limited evidence whereas theory is an idea or set of ideas that is intended to explain facts or events so it's not scientifically tested or proven scientifically tested and proven if you talk about the theory and hypothesis is not because it's on the process of you know testing so sometimes you know the whatever the phenomena whatever the you know the uh, uh, this hypothesis you have taken maybe it it become accepted it be, it's rejected so we will talk about all those things about the acceptance and and rejections in a very gradual manner you know we will take certain examples there are some real life scenarios there are certain examples which can definitely defend you know how the hypothesis is going to be change and what are the types of hypothesis that is more important because this is a presentation which talks about how you are going to build that concept of hypothesis once you once you are acclimatized yourself once you are acquainted with the with the hypothesis phenomena i think that is where you can very easily you know initiate your research because the backbone of any research is the hypothesis and the choosing the good objective we have already talked about that if your gap is explored and then you have chosen a objective which could be not more but could be in you know, a fingertips and from there if you have framed the hypothesis and if that hypothesis are well versed and uh, you know then you have uh, taken alternative hy hypothesis then you have uh, accepted or rejection model is there so we will definitely talk about all those things then based on limited data that is very true because when you talk about the hypothesis you have got certain constraints certain limitations is there and based on wide range of data i think theory is always believes in you know having a wide range of data and can lead to a theory can be formulated through a hypothesis that is very true because uh, if you talk about hypothesis there are certain you know the secondary data which are there there are certain you know the literature which is there and when you go through that particular literature from there you find out certain gaps so while you know talking about the hypothesis you have to have certain theory in your mind or theory in your hand and from that theory you extract certain information then come to the uh, certain hypothesis and when you talk about you know the theory it can be formulated through an hypothesis that is very true because when you apply the phenomena when you apply the tools of hypothesis you have null hypothesis then you have certain uh, alternate hypothesis then you accept or reject and finally when you accept it it's it's become you know part and parcel of the research and when you start you know doing the research then very easily you come to the conclusion and that take a form of the theory so this is uh, that considered to be you know the first and information which you gathered or or you know taken extracted from the uh, from the respondents to whom you have sent the floated the questionnaire so this is something which is there and when you talk about hypothesis hypothesis is a statement to guide research that is very true and and when you talk about prediction prediction is a is a guess of the outcome so uh, if you, the example is that you know getting 8 hours of sleep makes more productive employees that is very true it's considered to be a hypothesis but on the other hand prediction is if the individual gets 8 hours of sleep then the individual will be more productive i think because it talks about you know uh, uh, the the thing which is there so a hypothesis can be defined as an explanatory principle accounting for known facts in hypothetical thinking we want to know why something is true and we reason behind and we reason backward to find some explanation of for the facts one that makes sense of them so we use our imagination to find some reasons why things are the way they are and then you know these are considered to be a null hypothesis and then finally what happen we can we take alternative hypothesis and then we start you know doing the research and finally you know the respondents the two respondents in the question they need to be sent and then whatever they reciprocates we try to record it and then uh, the sample which you have chosen and those who have reciprocated we accumulate all those data and then come to the conclusion so this is the modus operandi and uh, once we build the concept you know gradually there are certain term more terminologies which we throw a light on that and finally what happen after certain time you find out that when the concept is going to be uh, uh, mug up then very easily you can start you know using it you start you uh, testing the concepts and then come to the conclusion so that is the beauty of this particular course if you talk about research methodology and statistic analysis it talks about the research from underneath to pinnacle and what we observe that 
there are many things which are taken into consideration and uh, while you know certain concepts certain uh, approaches so we will definitely throw a light and you feel that you know once you are uh, acquainted with this particular course very easily you can uh, uh, do your research in a more systematic manner so this is the point of discussion for today's discussion you know we have already talked about the research problem this is a chapter 2 and formulation of objective we have covered in our preceding sessions and this particular portion we are covering you know hypothesis meaning of hypothesis types of hypothesis very important like you know descriptive or explanatory or null or alternative so we will talk about you know what are you know the different types of uh, hypothesis and we will gradually you know take certain examples that is more important like how these examples are defending this particular type so that is where you know it can give the clear picture about the certain things and then testing of hypothesis and use of hypothesis how you are going to use the hypothesis because uh, if you are not enough position to use the hypothesis you are not going to you know get the end results so for getting the end results for getting the respondents view i think respond this hypothesis is quite important so hypothesis is, uh, in research is is talking about uh, uh, testable answers to a scientific questions and uh, which are more tentative in nature and hypothesis proposes explanation for a phenomena that is very true it's not it's a, it's not a solid you know verdict but it's a proposed and maybe whatever we are proposing can be accepted can be rejected so we will see that how this uh, procedure can work and hypothesis suggested solution for an unexplained occurrence that does not fit into current accepted scientific theory and uh, uh, what we observe that an hypothesis leads to one or more predictions so it's not like that you know you have uh, you have only one uh, one predictions or two predictions it you have one or more predictions so that is the reason you know when we uh, work on the basis of gap and come to the objectives these objectives are converted into hypothesis and when you are having the hypothesis you have you have two or three verdicts in between you know one talks about it can happen it cannot be happen Uh, and uh, you know so on the basis of these things your predictions can somewhat accepted sometimes some somewhat some sometimes it can could be rejected so the basic idea of a hypothesis is that there is no predetermined outcome that is very true because if you have a predetermined outcome in your mind i think you could be biased and sometimes you know that we have observed that the researchers are quite rigid in nature what they are thinking that whatever the hypothesis they have taken the null hypothesis they are taken it considered to be accepted so they are quite biased in their beginning stage so the uh, the good point one should keep in mind that they should not be predetermined and uh, let you know the respondents reciprocate because it's it's fine that you have gone through the literature you are expert in your particular area you are wizard in your particular area but when you are floating this particular hypothesis or questions among the among the masses among you know the big number of people i think when they reciprocate when they reply then you know the the real challenge comes because the individual perception differs from from the from the opinion of you know the lot of people opinions so when lot of people reply they have they are taking into consideration certain minds and sometimes in majority of cases what we observe that the null hypothesis you know the predictions or you know the opinion which we have taken in the very beginning seems to be you know rejected so uh, yeah it's it's a, it's a you know part of the life which is going on so so that that could be you know the the methodology which we are going on so for a hypothesis to be scientific hypothesis the scientific methods requires that one can test it and we will definitely talk about when we are starting testing the hypothesis we try to you know take some more examples which can which can you know defend uh, the certain questions which which comes in the mind of the researchers or the grassroots researchers who have just you know initiated their research so scientists generally base scientific hypothesis on previous observations that cannot satisfactorily be explained with the available scientific theories and what is hypothesis in research you know hypothesis is a special statement of prediction i have already thrown a light it describes in concrete rather than theoretical so um, uh, terms what you expect will happen in a study and not all studies have hypothesis that is very true sometimes you know there are certain things which are which goes in a stereotype manner which goes in a straight forward manner so there you know the hypothesis is not going to apply and if there could be certain if there could not be no alternatives i think in that case we have to be follow whatever the null hypothesis we have taken and sometimes a study is designed to be exploratory and inductive research is there so hypothesis is used in an experiment to define the relationship between two variables there are one variables which talks about you know 
uh, one thing and other variables talks about that. So we will definitely talk about what are the variables and how this relationship is going to be con done between bri bridge between the two variables. The purpose of hypothesis is to find the answers to a question. And uh, that is very true there when we have certain hypotheses, null hypothesis, and uh, once we start, you know, doing the research, the, the alternate hypothesis also comes. So it is going to, uh, uh, the, the questions which researchers had framed, it's going to come to them. The independent variable in, in our previous example is not studying for a test, and the dependent variable that you are using to measure outcome is your test score. So what we have seen that hypothesis should always explain what you expect to happen be clear and understandable, be testable and be measurable. I think that is something which is there. It's not like that uh, you should always, you know, expect the things uh, in, a, in a very uh, simple manner. Always believe in test. There are certain tests which are there and there are certain statistical tools also, like T-test, ANOVA test and all. So how these are going to, you know, test the hypothesis and there are certain, you know, the manual way of checking the hypothesis but when the data is gigantic in nature, when the data is different uh, shape, I think the test is going to, statistical test is going to play a very vital role. And you are, how you're going to measure that is more important. So contain an, an independent and dependent variable. There are independent variable, there are dependent variable, and how it is going to be have a combination of that that need to be taken care. So now this is a very important thing because when we talk about the hypothesis, I think there are certain types which need to be highlighted in a more uh, more elaborative manner. So explanatory hypotheses are there, then descriptive hypotheses are there, then analogical hypotheses are there, then working hypotheses are there, then null hypothesis and alternate hypotheses are there, then statistical hypotheses are there. So uh, when we are going to use this hypothesis, it's, it's, uh, it's there. There's no thumb rule behind that. It's not like that and there's no rocket science that you can, you know, start with the, with one hypothesis and you are adhere or rigid to that. Very easily you can, you know, switch over yourself, very easily you can, you know, move into based on the circumstances, based on the scenario. And sometimes, you know, the, the based on the sample size also. Some, sometimes what you observe that the sample size, uh, sample, uh, uh, sampling, collecting the sample, you know, collection of data through sampling is, you know, is a very cumbersome task. So in, in that case, there are certain, you know, the methodology which are going to apply. So we will talk one by one. If you talk about, you know, the explanatory hypothesis, which is usually called the relational hypothesis, it describes relationship between two variables. And relationship may be positive, may be negative, may or, you know, may, or having a causal effect. So this type of hypothesis explains the happenings of phenomena, like families with higher income spends more for recreation, foreign goods are perceived by Indian consumers to be better quality than domestic goods. So what we have ob observed that there are certain relationship which is, which is linked with that. So if you talk about this particular explanatory hypothesis, we must devise a set of experimental conditions under which something specific will occur if the hypothesis is correct, but it will not occur if the hypothesis is incorrect. So in that case, what happened, the null hypothesis you have taken become rejected and then you can, you have accept, you're going, you have no option but to accept the alternate hypothesis. So there are, therefore our test must meet two exacting criteria. It must predict what will happen if explanation is correct. It must predict what will not happen if the explanation is wrong. So. This is the explanatory study and now the second one is descriptive hypothesis and this this hypothesis describes the cause and effect relationship of a phenomena. Group like you know the example group study helps to achieve high marks in examination and public enterprise are more amenable to for centralized planning. So what we observe that you know the, this descriptive hypothesis model is there and proposition that state the existence, size, form or distribution of some variable are, are, are into picture. And variable can be object, it can be person, organization, situation, or event. So it's not like that you can just, you know, confine to certain things, but it can be object, person, organization, situation, or event. And, uh, and if you talk about analogical hypothesis, when we formulate a hypothesis on the basis of similarities, analogy, it is called an analogical hypothesis, like families with higher earning invest more surplus income on long-term investments. So what we have observed that uh, uh, there are certain similarities that if the income is high, if your paying capacity is more, if your spending capacity is more, very easily you can buy some, it's, it's occurred with, you know, the elite goods or what we observe that there are, there are certain, you know, items which are quite expensive in nature and uh, it, it, it scattered the particular segment. So like, you know, the, uh, the expensive cars, you know, the brands like you know, the Mercedes or, you know, 
uh, the BMWs and which is you know having a different segment. So and you know uh, on the other hand there are certain you know gadgets which are which are going to cater the particular class and breed. Like the Apple phones have got a different segment, whereas you know the 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 phone which are in the bracket of ten to fifteen thousand rupees are are you know cater the different class and breed. So this is basically a model which is there. And when you talk about the working hypothesis, sometimes certain facts cannot be explained adequately by existing hypothesis and now no new hypothesis comes up. Thus the investigation is held up in this situation. A researcher try to formulate a hypothesis which enables continue investigation. So continue like you know framed initially may not be very specific subject to modification or when existing data is an insufficient. So in that case you work on the continuing investigation and this the and you start you know working and then uh, in a routine manner you come to the conclusion or you know in, when you start doing the process because certain changes which are coming up in a very frequent manner in, and these how to you are going to uh, uh, stop the changes for that you know the working hypothesis will be there. So it's it could be quite perpetual in nature it could be quite you know uh, movement specific where uh, you can start your hypothesis testing in a, in a routine manner and it can go up to you know till the research is on the final end. So this is the model which is there and uh, and there are certain examples which are which are which are there like uh, uh, so uh, now you know the null and alternative hypothesis is there if you talk about this particular uh, hypothesis uh, we have already talked about null hypothesis which stands with h0 or alternate hypothesis which stands with h1 so so null hypothesis denoted and the alternate hypothesis denoted as H1 or HA which we use as called as uh, uh, alternate hypothesis. So null hypothesis is the one to be tested and alternate is very is everything else. So null hypothesis is general statement that states that there is no relationship between two phenomena under, condi under condi consideration or that is there no association between two groups. So an alternative hypothesis is a statement that describes that there is a relationship between two selected variables in a study. And when you know when you start with the null hypothesis, then you have certain alternative hypothesis, and finally, if null hypothesis rejected, then alternate hypothesis accepted. So the assumption you beginning with the opposite of what you are testing. So alternate hypothesis is the claim you are testing, and when you talk about the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis assumes that there is no relationship between two variables, and that controlling one variable has no effect on the other hand. Like you know the cat. Uh, show no preference for food based on shape, plant growth is not affected by light color, age has no effect on musical ability. So these are considered to be the null hypothesis and when you uh, go more into the backdrop of null hypothesis, I think uh, is, this is a statement that denies the working hypothesis, predicts that there is no relationship between two variables, cannot exist in reality. An assumption that will maintained by the researcher unless the analysis of data provide significant evidence to dis uh, prove it and denoted as HO I have already talked about as zero or we can say uh, for example you know this is an example which is linked with alternative hypothesis also in clinical trial there is no significant dis difference between two drugs this is this is considered to be the null hypothesis now when we move to a alternative hypothesis the, hypo uh, the hypothesis to be accepted when null hypothesis is rejected that is very true and denoted by H1 or HA we have talked about and if you see the particular statement which we have used in the null hypothesis, we are creating a replica of that. In clinical trial, there is no significant difference between two drugs. This was null hypothesis and now alternate hypothesis is in clinical trials, the new drug is better than the current drug. So, so why we are putting this hypothesis because when we start the research, we have certain presumptions, certain assumptions in our mind that we start our journey with this particular framework, with this particular statement. But when it is, you know, floated to the respondent, to the, to the, you know, the group of people, to the masses, and the, when the masses, you know, reciprocates, I think from there, you know, the, the problem comes because, or the answer comes because they have a different bent of mind, they have a different flavor, and then, you know, the things are there. So anyway, I think statistical hypothesis is, are the statement derived from a sample. These are qualitative in nature and are numerically measurable. For example, the market share of product S is 70%, the average life of tube light is 2000 hours, etc. So now uh, what we are going to do, uh, how to formulate an effective hypothesis that is there, state the problems that you are trying to solve, make sure that hypothesis clearly defines the topic and focus of the experiment. Try to write the hypothesis as, uh, as an 
if then statement define the variables i think uh, i think uh, steps in hypothesis testing is data state hypothesis select test statistics calculate test statistic Con now uh, conclude if you are going to conclude ho may be true do not reject and con and this uh, ha is true so anyway i think we are going to wind up now and uh, we have already talked about this particular phenomena and uh, if you talk about the use of hypothesis as starting point for many research work it helps in deciding the direction in which to proceed it's help in selecting and collecting pertinent facts it is an aid to explanation it helps in drawing specific conclusions and then testing theories are there and it works on the future knowledge i think uh, we have we have thrown a light on hypothesis in a in a very elaborate manner and starting with you know the types and and what are the concept which are behind the assumption so and the whole research you know starts with the assumption and lead and need and then you lead to the final conclusion which is more you know realistic in nature so hypothesis starts with assumption and talks about the realistic approach and then you know the model is uh, apply and uh, i think i we, we could wind up in our in our forthcoming session we are going to talk more about you know the certain phenomena which are going to be useful related to that and then once we build up the concept then very easily we can apply the uh, the the concept in testing the uh, the the research and other things thank you very much